Hi everyone, welcome back. Here I'll be discussing separate paintings in depth and explaining the references behind them. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to MediumRareChicken.com. On October 2nd, 2018, Jamal Khashoggi, a US-based journalist and critic of Saudi Arabia's government, walked into the Saudi consulate in Istanbul where he was murdered. In the months that followed, conflicting narratives emerged over how he died what happened to his remains, and who was responsible. Saudi officials said the journalist was killed in a rogue operation by a team of agents sent to persuade him to return to the kingdom, while Turkish officials said the agents acted on orders from the highest levels of the Saudi government. As a prominent Saudi journalist, he covered major stories, including the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan and the rise of the late Al-Qaeda leader, Osama bin Laden, for various Saudi news organizations. For decades, the 59-year-old was close to the Saudi royal family and also served as an advisor to the government. But he fell out of favor and went into a self-imposed exile in the U.S. in 2017. From there, he wrote a monthly column in the Washington Post in which he criticized the policies of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the son of King Salman and Saudi Arabia's de facto leader. In his first column for the Post in September 2017, Khashoggi said he had feared being arrested in an apparent crackdown on dissent overseen by the prince. Khashoggi first visited the Saudi consulate in Istanbul on September 28, 2018 to obtain a Saudi document stating that he was divorced so that he could marry his Turkish fiancée, Hatice Sengiz. He was told he would have to return to pick up his document and arrange to come back on October 2nd. He did not believe that something bad could happen on Turkish soil, Ms. Sengiz wrote in the post. Ms. Sengiz accompanied him to the entrance of the consulate on October 2nd. He was last seen on CCTV footage entering the building at 1.14 p.m. local time. Despite reassuring friends that he would not face any problems inside, he gave Ms. Sengiz two cell phones and told her to call an advisor to Turkish President Adragan if he did not come back out. She ultimately waited more than 10 hours outside the consulate and returned the following morning when Khashoggi had still not reappeared. For more than two weeks, Saudi Arabia consistently denied any knowledge of Khashoggi's fate. Prince Mohammed told Bloomberg News that the journalist had left the consulate after a few minutes or one hour. We have nothing to hide, he added. But in a change of tune, on October 20th, the Saudi government said a preliminary investigation by prosecutors had concluded that the journalist died during a fight after resisting attempts to return him to Saudi Arabia. Later, a Saudi official attributed the death to a chokehold. On November 15th, Saudi Arabia's deputy public prosecutor, Shalan Al Shalan, said the murder was ordered by the head of a negotiations team sent to Istanbul by the Saudi deputy intelligence chief to bring Khashoggi back to the kingdom by means of persuasion or if that failed, by force. Investigators concluded that Khashoggi was forcibly restrained after a struggle and injected with a large amount of a drug resulting in an overdose that led to his death, Mr. Shalan said. His body was then dismembered and handed over to a local collaborator outside of the consulate for disposal. Five individuals had confessed to the murder, Mr. Shalan asserted, adding the Crown Prince did not have any knowledge of it. The Saudi public prosecution said in late September 2018 that a total of 31 individuals were investigated over the killing and that 21 of them were arrested. Five senior government officials were also fired, including Deputy Intelligence Chief Ahmad Asiri and Saud al Qatani, a senior aide to Prince Mohammed. In January 2019, 11 individuals who had not been named were put on trial at the Riyadi Criminal Court in connection with Khashoggi's murder, and the public prosecutor sought the death penalty for all five of them. Human Rights Watch said the trial which took place behind closed doors, did not meet international standards and that authorities obstructed meaningful accountability. In December 2019, the court sentenced five individuals to death for committing and directly participating in the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. Three others were handed prison sentences totaling 24 years for covering up this crime and violating the law, while the remaining three were found not guilty. The public prosecution said that Mr. Asari was tried but acquitted due to insufficient evidence, while Mr. Katani was investigated over the killing but not charged. 
At a news conference following the verdict, Shalan Al Shalan said the public prosecution's investigation had shown that the killing was not premeditated. Ms. Calamard dismissed the assertions as utterly ridiculous and said the trial represented the antithesis of justice from which the masterminds walked free. Four months later, the Riyadi Criminal Court commuted the death sentences handed to five of the defendants to 20 years in prison. The three others were given sentences between seven and 10 years. The prosecution said the verdicts were final and that the criminal trial was now closed. Ms. Sengiz said that the ruling made a complete mockery of justice. The Saudi authorities are closing the case without the world knowing the truth of who is responsible for Jamal's murder, she added. Who planned it? Who ordered it? Where is his body? These are the most basic and important questions that remain totally unanswered. Turkish officials said that a team of 15 Saudi agents, assisted by three intelligence officers, arrived in Istanbul in the days before the murder and that the group removed the security cameras and surveillance footage from the consulate before Khashoggi's arrival. Istanbul's chief prosecutor, Irfan Fadan, said on October 31st, 2018, that the journalist was suffocated almost as soon as he entered the consulate and that his body was dismembered and destroyed. Writing in the Washington Post on November 2nd, Turkish President Adragan declared that it had been established that Khashoggi was killed in cold blood by a death squad and that his murder was premeditated. Yet there are other, no significant questions whose answers would contribute to our understanding of this deplorable act, he added. Where is Khashoggi's body? Who is the local collaborator to whom Saudi officials claim to have handed over Khashoggi's remains? Who gave the orders to kill this kind soul? Unfortunately, the Saudi authorities have refused to answer these questions. Mr. Dragan said he knew that the order to kill Khashoggi came from the highest levels of Saudi government, but that he did not believe for a second that King Salman, the custodian of the holy mosques, ordered the hit. In March 2020, the Istanbul chief prosecutor formally charged Saad al Qatani, Ahmad Asiri, and 18 other Saudi nationals with the murder. Prince Mohammed's two former top aides were charged with instigating a premeditated murder. The others were charged with carrying out said murder. Saudi Arabia rejected Turkey's extradition request, so all 20 men were put on trial in absentia in Istanbul in July 2020. Court-appointed Turkish lawyers representing the defendants said that their clients denied the charges. In November, the court accepted a second indictment adding another six Saudis to the case. A vice consul and an attaché were accused of premeditated murder with monstrous intent. The four others were charged with destroying, concealing, or tampering with evidence. Now onto the painting at hand. In this painting, Mohammed bin Salman stares at the viewer, and right behind him is Jesus Christ, depicted in the Leonardo da Vinci Salvatore Mundi painting. This reference was chosen because that Da Vinci painting is the most expensive piece of artwork ever sold in human history, and the buyer is none other than you guessed it, MBS himself. In this reference, Jesus is depicted smoking a cigarette with blood on his hands and a bandolier of bullets attached to his chest. Right behind Jesus is a skull staring directly at the viewer with the price tag 450 million above his head. Below is another skull, screaming in the direction of Mohammed bin Salman. This skull represents Jamal Khashoggi, with his birth and death dates both referenced right next to it. The gas sign, which says Chevron, represents the infinite wealth that Saudi Arabia controls over natural resources such as oil. Next to MBS are the Netflix and Hulu logos, but they're crossed out. This is to indicate how major streaming platforms were afraid to air the Brian Fogel documentary, The Dissident, which detailed the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, allegedly at the hands of Saudi Arabian officials. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to MediumRareChicken.com on YouTube and Instagram.